Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, I'm going to show you three modern ways you could remove people from an image in Photoshop. You know, since Adobe introduced and started to integrate AI into Photoshop, there's been a huge debate. A lot of people love it and have been embracing it, but there's probably an equal amount of people that hate it. They hate everything about it. But I think as far as the people who hate it are concerned, they seem to be concentrating on the most publicized feature. That is, you could use a text prompt to add something to an image or remove something from an image or even use a text prompt to create an image from scratch. So you could start out with a blank palette and just use a text prompt to tell Photoshop you want to see an elephant riding a unicycle in a top hat in Times Square, and it will create that image for you. What I think a lot of those people who hate AI in Photoshop are overlooking are some of the more subtle things you could do with AI in Photoshop. For example, in the past, if I took a wedding shot and there was something in the background that I had to remove, I really had to be a Photoshop expert to do that. But with AI, it's super easy now and anyone could do it. So in today's video, I'm going to show you three different ways you could use this new AI in Photoshop to remove people from an image. Two of the ways are in the current version of Photoshop. One of the ways I'm going to be showing you is currently in beta, but again, I'm going to show you all three in this video. Now, there's a number of different tools we're going to be using to remove people from an image. Uh, the first tool you're going to need is in the Remove Tools. You can see here that there's this little Band-Aid tool. If you click on that, you could see that by default, you'll probably be on the spot healing brush. Well, you're going to need this remove tool. That's the one with the little band-aid and stars. And the other tool we'll be needing is the object selection tool. And that is in the selection tools. That's right here. And the object selection tool is grouped together with two other tools, but it's right here. Make sure you're using that. And at times we may need, let's say, the lasso tool or the uh, rectangular marquee tool. Now, if your toolbar doesn't look like mine, what you could do is go up to edit and then down to toolbar. Then from here, click on restore defaults and then click done. And then your toolbar should look like mine. Also, if your Photoshop doesn't look quite like mine, what you could do is go up to window, workspace, and make sure you're in the photography workspace. Also, we're going to be using the contextual taskbar. I have mine pinned right here so it doesn't move. By default, it floats around. Uh, if you don't see the contextual taskbar, again, go to window and then at the bottom, put a check mark next to contextual taskbar. And if you want it to stay in its place so it doesn't jump around your screen, you could just drag it where you want it with grabbing it right here and then going over to the right to these three dots and then pin the bar position and it will stay there. So now that we have our tools and we have the contextual taskbar and we're in the photography workspace, let's remove the two people in the background in this image. The way I recommend you try first is by going to the remove tool. Again, it's that little band-aid with the stars and then go to find distractions and then to people. And what it will do is it will use AI to find the non-important people in the image. And you could see that it puts this red overlay over the two people. And it has the overlay over part of the iPad. I'm assuming that's an iPad they're looking at, at least some type of tablet. But that's okay. That's good enough. Once it found the people, and you can see it didn't catch part of this person's light, but that's okay. Because it actually, when you do the um, actual removal, it will remove the entire person. So it looks pretty good. You could, though, add to it if you want because you have a brush and you could add to it. And you could see you have a plus brush or a minus brush, but I'm going to just leave it as is. And then click on this little check mark, and you'll notice then it will use AI to remove the people and kind of fill the background in with something that looks correct. Now, how fast it goes really depends on the speed of your computer, but you could see that it does a really good job. It removed the people from the background. Now, there are times, though, where that won't work. For example, let's go to this image over here. 
In this image, we have the two main characters in the foreground here. And then we have actually three people in the background. We have this person that's pretty obvious. We have the back of another person here. And then we have this person way off in the distance. So I'd like to remove all three of these people. So again, if I go to the Remove tool and I click on Find Distractions and go to Editable People, you'll notice that it found this person in the background, but it didn't find this back of the person or that person there, the more obvious person. So what can you do? Well, what you can do is you could just use the Remove tool. So we'll just get a smaller brush by hitting the left bracket key. Larger brush is the right bracket key. And then you could come in and just like make sure that you're on the plus brush so you're adding. And then we could come in and just paint that red overlay directly over this person. And get that back of that guy or girl, could be, I don't know. And then make sure we get his leg over here. And you don't have to be precise. You see how I'm even overlapping on the desk. So that's okay. Just, you know, paint. Paint over the persons and that you want removed in this case. So we have these two men and this guy in the background all, all selected. Click the little check mark over here on the top. And then again, it's going to use AI to look at the area, remove what you painted. And then it's going to then hopefully fill it in with something that looks normal. Now, in this case, I don't really like what it did. But you could see how that worked. There are some other things you could do, though. Let me undo this by hitting Command-Z on my Mac. It's Control-Z on a PC. If you try this Remove tool and go to Find Distractions and People, and it doesn't really find the people, there's other ways you could do this. What you could do is you could get, let's say, the Lasso tool. With the Lasso tool, you could kind of just draw a lasso around this guy, and we'll get, grab the back of the other guy while we're there. I'm going to just call that person a guy, even though I don't know for sure if it is. And then we're going to come up, we're even going to grab part of the dust, that's okay, and then come over here and finish off our selection. So we have these two people selected. Now we'll go up here and we want to add to the selection. So click on the second icon from the left so that it's adding to the selection. And then we'll grab this person back here. And again, I'm not worried about getting it exact. Okay. So now I have these three people selected. From the contextual taskbar, when you have a selection, you'll have a generative fill here. Just click on that. And then it's going to come with the text prompt. If you want to add something there, you could type in what you want added, but I just want them removed. So then just click on generate. And like any other generative fill or generative AI function, it's going to give you three variations. So when compared to the remove tools, remove distractions, people, there is a little more versatile in that it gives us three options. There's one, there's the second, and there's the third. Now the, the first one or the, what I showed you previously just gave us the one option. So hopefully you find something here. If these three aren't cutting it, you could just click generate and it will give you three more. So you could keep going until it gives you something acceptable. Now, as far as what I've showed you so far, uh, they're available in the current version of Photoshop. There is, though, something that's available in the beta version of Photoshop that if you're using that, you may want to try. So to get to that, I'm going to go up to my history panel and I'm going to go back to my second lasso tool so that I have my selection back. So we backed up to this point where I have all three people selected. When you have a selection in the beta version of Photoshop, not only will you have gender to fill on the contextual taskbar, you'll also have remove on the contextual taskbar. This is the same remove that's over here. So you just could just do your selection in a different way. I use the lasso tool instead of using the brush that comes with the remove tool. So just click here, and like the Remove tool, it's only going to give you one option. So hopefully it gives you an acceptable version right out of the box because you won't have two other variations to choose from. And this actually looks pretty good. So that is the third way to remove, um, you know, something, people from an image. And I should add that 
If you do use the Band-Aid with the stars, the remove tool, and you go to find distractions, that you could use wire and cables. That's, of course, for another video, and I've done videos on that. But this is only for people. Using the lasso tool could be anything. So it could be not just a person. It could be just an ugly plant in the background or something like that. So you could do that for things other than people. Let's go to this other image because I've showed you that you could use the remove tool. You could use the lasso tool, right? You also could use the rectangular marquee tool instead of the lasso tool. So you could just draw it like a marquee, like something like that, and then use that. Um, you could use different types of lasso tools, but mainly you probably use the lasso tool. But there is this object selection tool. When that is active, Photoshop will use AI to find different objects in the scene. And this isn't just for people. And if you hover the cursor over that so-called object, you'll see what it's selected. So you could get our hat and stuff like that. Now, I could get the background, but I want to get this guy in the background. So I could click on him, right? And I'll get a selection. And you can see it got his hat. What you could do, though, is come up here and again go to the second icon from the left. So you're adding to the selection. We could add his face. We could add his vest. We could add this. We could add that. A better way, let me undo all this. It's just with the object selection tool, what you can do instead is go to this drop down. You could choose a rectangle or a lasso tool. We just used a lasso tool. Let's try the rectangle tool, and it's a rectangular marquee. And what you would do is just kind of draw a rectangular marquee around the object, in this case, a person that we want selected. Let it do its thing, and you'll see it got a selection of this guy. And you can see how it went around his hat, went around her iPad, and it looks pretty good. I could tell you, though, it's not going to work well. Now, when you do, though, have a selection with the object selection tool and you your selected object, in this case a person, and you want to remove it, you do have that option in the current version of Photoshop, Generative Fill. If you're in the beta version, you'll have the, sec the other option, Remove. But let's just use Generative Fill for an example, and we'll click there, and then we'll click Generate. Now, what you'll find is if your selection is too tight, particularly on an object that is in the background and is blurry, you're going to get a weird outline. And you got to learn how to fix it. Now, in this case, actually, it made a layer out of me. Or it looks pretty good. So here's kind of the weird outline on the second option. You could see that. Let me come off the object selection tool. You could see there's this line here and there. We'll come over here and see this one. Not as bad there. But if you do... A remove like that and you have this kind of weird line coming in here what you could do instead let me back up by hitting command z on my mac control z on a pc until i get my selection again i used the object selection tool to select this man in the background what i can do is i could add to the selection with any of the other selection tools the rectangular marquee the elliptical marquee single row marquee any of those or I could just use this regular lasso tool, make sure that I'm in add mode. And what I want to do is come in here and add this part in here. So I'll come in here and I'll just grab more of his arm, his side, and then I'll come up like this. I'll add that. So it's hopefully going to just grab more outside of him. Like this. I hit a little bit of a line there, as I recall, so I'll grab that. There wasn't really a line around his hat, uh, but if there was, I could add to it with the lasso tool there. Another option you could have, if it was a cleaner selection, meaning uh, the main subject wasn't covering up part of them, like they had a lot of space around them, to expand the entire selection, you could go up to Select, then down to modify, and then down to expand, and you could expand it by a specific number of pixels. Now, the number of pixels you choose really depends on the resolution of your image. If you're working on an image that's only, let's say, 1,000 pixels by 700 pixels, then you don't have to put as big of a number here. But if you're working on an image that's 10,000 pixels by 7,000 pixels, then you're going to have to put a lot larger of an, a number here. And you're going to have to experiment that. But in this case here, I don't need to use this. I just use the lasso tool 
to expand my selection. Then once I have that, I could use gendered fill in the current version of Photoshop, or if I'm using the beta version of Photoshop, I could use gendered fill or remove, either one. Let's try the remove for this specific example. For something like this, though, where he's uh, kind of behind, you can see it came up with a program error I am using the beta version. It may not work like that. Or because you're only going to get one option is you may not want to use the remove because if it doesn't look right, then you got to do it all over again. With generative fill, at least, it gives you three options to choose from. And you could click generate button to get three more. And you could click generate to get three more. So you could just keep doing that until you get an acceptable uh, removal of whatever it is you're removing. So in this case here, that doesn't look too bad. There's another one and there's another one. I think I like that first one better. So no one's going to really notice that anyway. We noticed it because we knew the guy was there to begin with. But I don't think no one would notice it. So I think that looks pretty good. So those are three modern ways, mainly to remove people from an image in Photoshop. But you saw that um, if you're not using the find distractions people, you could use the other two methods to remove not only people, but things other than people as well. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.